We're ready for example number nine, aren't we? Yeah, everybody ready? Yay! So example number nine, linear functions here. And so similar to the one we just worked, watch them in sequence, I can't say that enough times, okay? They build on each other. But there's two lines here again. There's the one they gave us, which I'm gonna graph in red. There's the one that we're supposed to build, which I'm gonna graph in green. You don't have to use colors on your homework. I'm just trying to make them stand out. So the one they gave us, let's start with that. All right, if we were going to graph that, and this is good practice for that kind of question, let's take the one they gave us, and we would hopefully say, hey, that's not slope-intercept form there, is it? All right, so we need to get y by itself. And so the steps, of course, would be to subtract over the 3x. You know, this is very similar if you need to go back and review I believe it was example number two where we took an equation of that type and we got it in slope intercept form, which the fancy people would say, uh, well, no, the hillbillies would say, get Y by itself, and the fancy people would say, slope intercept form. But anyway, if we divide both of these by two, we would get negative three halves X plus seven. And that's just a rearrangement of that red equation they gave us at the beginning. And again, the purpose in rearranging it is to make it easy to graph it, find our beginning point, and then move to another from there. B, beginning point, M, move to another. Makes sense, I hope. So anyway, the ordered pair that's easiest to find here would be to plug in zero for X, and Y would equal seven, that number sticking on the end, and zero, seven, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again, I would ask you, when you graph these on your homework, to plot, to graph both lines when there's questions of this type. So 0, 7 is there. And then wouldn't the slope of that particular line they gave us, red, nothing mathematical about red and green, just trying to make them stand out, but wouldn't that be uh, to go down 3 and to the right 2? Um, because that's a positive two. So anyway, down three, one, two, three, and then to the right two. And then as we discussed on assignment 18, I hope you would all agree that that has the profile of a negatively sloped line. Remember that, we talked about, you know, those. that's the kind of line you'll get when you have a negative slope. So there you go. All right, so here's the deal. That red line they gave us ended up looking something like this, okay? But now look at the word here, it's not parallel, it's not train tracks, like you guys told me earlier. So the question becomes, what this green line we're gonna build, if it's gonna be perpendicular to that one, what does that mean? What's that, anybody have any ideas what perpendicular might mean? Well, they cross each other. Yeah, they do, they cross each other. That's right, this green line's gonna cross that red one. That's true. Is there any special way in which they cross each other? Yeah, they cross each other at a right angle. A right angle, yeah. Otherwise known as what? 90 degrees, a 90 degree angle. That's right, that's what perpendicular means. This green one we're gonna build better end up crossing that red one at a 90 degree angle like this, all right? And by the way, in geometry, we put a little square here to show that that's a 90 degree angle. Okay, so look, I struggle a little bit with explaining this one, but how are we gonna figure out the slope of that green line in comparison to the slope of that red one? Well, I think that it's easy to explain that if that red one had a negative slope, shouldn't the green one have a positive slope? So the idea would be that if two lines are going to be parallel, their slopes would have to be opposite signs, wouldn't they? If one of them's negative, the other one's positive, right? Okay, so our green line better have a positive slope. I think I can explain that. That's very visual. You'll also notice though that not only do you change the sign to make them perpendicular, but math, smart math people have figured out that not only do they have to be opposite signs, but they also have to be reciprocals of each other. All right, so when the two lines are supposed to be perpendicular, you change the sign and flip it over, basically. So the reciprocal of that would be two thirds. And that's gonna be the slope of that. I once had a student who said they had to miss class for a dental appointment. 
And I said, oh, that's too bad. What time is your appointment? And they said, 2.30, two-thirds, 2.30. I said, that's appropriate for a dental appointment. Two-thirty, <laughs> two-thirds, 2.30 dental appointment. Oh, okay, I miss you. I don't know if you miss me, but oh well. All right, so this green line better have a slope of two-thirds. And so um, that's two-thirds. And then, like we've been doing, let's use this ordered pair for the x and the y. And so x is negative 6 and y is 5. And negative 6 is negative 6, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So when we multiply these two numbers, that's arithmetic. That would be negative 12 divided by 3, 3 times 1, right? Negative 12 over 3. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4 plus b. And of course, we add over the 4, and we discover that the value of b is 9. So b would equal 9, and we come over and plug that in there. Yeah. All right. Now it's time to graph that green line. And so here we go. What would be a very easy beginning point to establish? What's a smart number to plug in for x? Zero. Exactly. Zero. Plug a zero in for x. You can do the math in your head. Two-thirds times zero disappears, and y immediately equals nine. Nine. That there number sticking on the end of that there equation. So zero, nine. We'll come to zero on the x, nine on the y, which would be basically two notches above the seven that we established earlier, right? Um, see, this has a different y-intercept than the other one. And then the slope is two-thirds, which means we're, we're doing the green one, right? We're building our own line. So we're going to rise two and run three. That would be up two and to the right three. Positive two, positive three, up to the right. So rise two, run three secondary point, and as we graph this, the hope would be, and it might be off a little bit because of a little bit of human error, but the hope would be that the rough visual would be that this green line would cross the red one at a 90 degree angle. And I believe that that looks close enough. Again, my scale isn't perfect, but you get the idea. So that takes care of that example. And when we come back, I think we'll have two more applications of this, and that will put us in good shape. So, there we go with that. Cool. To be honest with you, I'm curious what some of these links are. Yeah, okay, never mind. So we're going to move on. All right, see you in a bit.